Okay, so say say we didn't want to have two orange boxes. You know, that seems a little redundant. Uh, orange boxes are definitely one of my favorite things, but maybe maybe we want to have uh, an orange box and something else. Um, so one thing we can do is to right click the scene materials and import new materials. Uh, by default this will bring you to kind of uh, the makers of V-Rays uh, uh, kind of set up a directory of pre-made uh, V-Ray materials. Now it's important to note that these are .vizmat materials. Um, you can see .vizmat. There are other V-Ray materials for different uh, V-Ray engines, say 3D Studio Max. That would be different. But let's go ahead and just, I'm picking a wood, bring it in, I can update that and preview it. Uh, you know, it's nice green, it's got a little polish to it. So we'll take this first box and right click and apply that material to the object. So when we render, we'll see we have an orange box and a wood box. And you can see the grain running up the box there. You can see the orange kind of scattered and reflect, refracted here. Still see the shadows of the sun and how the shadows would actually bounce up and pull up that wall because of the, the just the way the geometry sits next to one another. Um, so you might be asking yourself, okay, well, hey, um, how do I get kind of these materials and patterns available instead of just setting an orange color? Um, well, if you look, that really under the wood here, uh, there's a material set. So we're not, we're, oh, let's cancel that. I'm actually in the wrong one here. It's, it says it's gray. Well, I mean, it's not gray. It's, it's actually a, a wood material. Uh, and this is the wood pattern. Uh, that's actually been pulled from a, a map uh, which is here. So this is wood1.jpg. Uh, there's you know, lots of other we have brush metals and other woods. But it is possible to go in and create your own custom materials by adding uh, images. So the way you would go about that is, uh, like I showed here, under diffuse, the thing you want it to be, the color you want it to be, you would use a map. By clicking map, I'm brought in here and I can say what type of map is it? Well, the bitmap. Uh, bitmap works with a JPEG. And then I have to give it a file. So I click M for map. And I could pick anything. Well, you know, if I wanted to really mess with it, I could pick wood 2. And this is the image that would be used. I'm going to leave it as wood 1 because that's the setting. No big deal. Uh, and I bring that in. And then I have some control and see, like, you know, how many times does it repeat in the U and the V? The way to think of this is X and Y. Uh, you can see there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, I can also come in and say I want to offset it a little bit. I don't know, let's see what offset of 5 does. Uh, apparently nothing. Offset 5. Yeah, I'm not getting any change there. But we, maybe we want a rotation of 0. Change the offset back to 0. And now you can see the grain is running in a different direction. Um, let's see what else we got in here. Uh, we can see what's a multiplier here. And that's kind of the brightness of the image that we're using. So it's it's affecting kind of the, the tonality of the wood. OK, so we'll, we'll take that. Similarly, I can, I can do that for a transparency. I could, I could actually say, OK, I want to use a, a bitmap of transparency. Um, I don't know where I'm going to find a good one real quick. Um, but imagine you know I was actually able to bring something in here and, 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 and regulate which portions of the material are solid and which are transparent. Uh, maybe we'll get to an example of that a little later in the tutorial session. Uh, the way this is used most is probably for a perforated metal, something with holes in it. Um, maybe a fritted glass where you have some white solid pieces and then transparent pieces. That would work well here. Um, so now let's see We've left that how it was. We've got our two things here. Uh, if we come under maps, um, this is available, of course, in, in any material. Even our orange here has maps. But we're going to look at wood. Uh, we have a couple different options again. If uh, you wanted to control specific portions where it was rough, maybe you could control refractions and refractions on being you know light and dark based in certain areas. Um, but probably most common is to use bump map. Uh, so I'm going to get a couple files ready. And uh, in the next video, we'll be looking at bump mapping and how to apply a bump map to a material so that this wood grain actually looks more true and has depth to it that it feels more tangible.